Afternoon, everyone. Oh, my video is working. Okay, there we go. All right, we'll just give everyone a couple of minutes just to join before we kick off, um, just in case people are having trouble connecting. But thanks for joining on time, everyone. So we've got Jennifer uh, who's looking after the, um, who set up the, the meeting invite from ITIC. Uh, and then we've also got Shuang, uh, who's our uh, data science lead or mentor. Um, so I think once we get to the, uh, the project discussion, um, we'll get uh, Shuang to do a, a bit of an intro as well uh, around what we're doing on the data science space. Hello, good afternoon, Steve. Hey, Shwang, how are you going? Fine, thank you. Uh, so, uh, I'm glad that you're Thanks for joining. the meeting. Yeah, no, that's excellent. Thanks for joining. So, um, I'll kick off now. I've got a, a slide pack. So, it's basically, it's based on, if you joined the information session for the quarry, it's based on that, but we'll go into a bit of a deep dive on the project. So once we get to that, I'll get Shwang to, uh, um, to talk about your project. Uh, and then I'll explain um, the other projects that we also have from a data science perspective. Yeah, sure. So, <coughs> so I will give okay. some brief introduction for my project. And firstly, I want to thank Steve for his kindly offering the opportunity. <laughs> So I can bring the students to work with my project. And in our project, we are working on automatic marking system. For the automatic marking system, actually, maybe for the internship students, we are working for the research part. And uh, because when, when an exam is finished, there are some texts. And how to process these texts is important to to mark the to mark the uh, exam, and firstly, uh, we, if we want to, if we want to mark an exam, and then we will we will we will we will extract some features from the text, and the, the students have used some maybe a word to vector and the bag of words and the latex directly analysis algorithm to to this different algorithm to extract the features from the text and after after getting the text we will use some maybe you transfer this text to vector by python 
And after that, we can use some drug racing methods to get a score. And then after maybe training many different uh, data sets and many different exams, we can finally get a score. Uh, then if we use this, maybe this, uh, this procedure to our automatic marking system, and then we can get the, we can get the score band, uh, automatically. We, by using this automatic marking system, we can maybe we can reduce the workload of instructors or teachers because you know in nowadays university or primary school, middle school, there are many, many exams. It is a big, um, actually it's a heavy stress for instructors or teachers to mark this exam. And uh, if we, uh, and we are having, and I also, we are working, working together to maybe develop the system prototype. If we, we can, we can, we can, I finish the system prototype, I think it will be a big success uh, to reduce the instructors of the university instructors or teachers. Oh, that's all. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Shreng. Um, let me just start my slide back at the beginning. And so obviously Shreng is uh, one of the mentors for uh, one of the streams with our data science program. And the aim of that is to build a uh, AI enabled exam marking tool. <clears throat> so what happens is when a student um, submits a paper um, or answers uh, either text or um, formula or spreadsheet or you know different versions of you know if it's a, if it's an assessment uh, where you're writing a paper or it's a uh, question and answer type uh, scenario or something where you need to do uh, a formula, then we'll analyze the correctness of each answer and then build a database that, uh, or, or basically build a, a model around that so that we can um, mark automatically uh, another student with the same uh, correct answer. So basically part of the concept is that we uh, group correct answers uh, and therefore, once an answer is marked correctly once, um, then it's automatically marked correctly for everyone who answered the question in the same way. So um, through that, we estimate that we will uh, reduce marking time for teaching staff by around 60 to 70 uh, percent. We've been working on this one for a while. So we've actually registered a patent uh, in February um, for uh, the, the process of um, AI-enabled teaching and learning. Uh, and as part of that, um, ITIC with its software team, uh, working with the data science team to actually build a prototype uh, at the moment. So ideally at the end of this semester, particularly with the AI-enabled uh, exam marking uh, project, uh, we will actually have an outcome where we have potentially a, uh, a product <clears throat> that we can commercialize and sell. So um, just a bigger picture around what we're doing in data science. So the aim for our data science program, uh, given that we've registered a patent, uh, we've developed a prototype, uh, we are actually uh, looking for venture capital funding um, towards the end of this year and someone who'd like to invest in building out the platform. So. Uh, one of the opportunities around what we're doing now is that um, as part of these programs, we do look to identify the best performing students. Um, and if uh, at the end of the year in particular, um, something exciting happens where we get investment into building this into, you know, MVP or minimum viable product, um, then we'll be looking to, to build out the team based on uh, those who've already participated in the project. Um, so let me just share my desktop again, and I'll just I'll just go back to the beginning of, of the program itself. Um, <coughs> so I'll put the screen up there. Um, so what we do is work integrated learning. So uh, the concept of work integrated learning is that um, we have a training component, uh, and then we have a work component. So what we usually do is we structure our programs uh, with the um, idea that the first four or five weeks, maybe six weeks, depending on the program, we do fundamentals and that will help you to get from where you are uh, to the point where we're confident that 
uh, you can start working on those projects. And then for the next roughly eight weeks, uh, we work on the projects together. And our projects will have <coughs> weekly meetings and catch ups, you'll be assigned tasks, um, and then you'll be expected to go off and do your own research and, and solve problems and, and come back with, with answers or solutions to some of the challenges that we're trying to resolve. Um, so basically ITIC is a background and these are the first few slides you'll recognise from uh, the Macquarie Uni uh, information session, but uh, just to, to uh, cover off for those who didn't attend, um, company's been around uh, for many years. It was established in 2001. Um, it's always been a IT certification and training company, uh, but we also have expanded last particularly the last four years uh, into pretty much all things IT. So we do cyber security, we do data science, uh, we have IT help desk and we do, uh, we build solutions uh, uh, predominantly in the, in the cloud uh, telephony and contact center space. And then we also have a, a software team. So we build uh, and, and provide our own software platforms into the telco market. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so our head office is in Sydney. Uh, we're actually uh, an exam centre, so if you're doing a certification and you want to do your exam, uh, we can do it from here. Uh, we also have a presence in Orange, uh, in regional New South Wales, um, on site, and the guys usually work uh, in the office a couple of days a week uh, since COVID. They, they sort of all went fully remote. Um, and they've come back now to sort of a couple of days a week. So that's when we run our team meetings and we have our um, stand up meetings and, and, you know, track progress and make sure that people are doing um, or have what they need uh, to do what they need to do and they can raise any issues uh, should they arise. Um, so the, the group structure, so ITIC is just one of uh, many companies that sort of all sit together. Um, the parent company is ITI, which was the software company that I originally founded with a friend of mine back in 2014. Um, that ITI then became uh, a spin-off company out of that, which was Yarn Lab. So these two companies uh, are purely software companies uh, and do uh, products that we've sold uh, both into Telstra, uh, as well as Cisco, as well as other global uh, telcos like uh, British Telecom. ITIC uh, has been around for a long time. 2001, as I said, it was established. Um, the original owner was a friend of mine who, uh, who passed away several years ago. So after that happened, uh, I then took over the reins of ITIC and I've been running that since 2016. Um, and since then, we've actually started a few subsidiary companies under ITIC. So we have uh, Vitic, which is where we have our cloud telephony and contact center solutions. Uh, Yuriga, which is actually an indigenous company focused on cybersecurity and then CyberSec Defense, which is a cybersecurity uh, company and data, uh, which is where the patent that we've registered around AI of education sits. Um, so ITIC through the software developers in ITI uh, is developing um, AI machine learning algorithms in data and ITIC will be the master uh, of the platform uh, moving forward as we, as we go out into the market. Um, so some of the companies that we work with um, through AI, so this is Gavin White's um, company and, and he has a, uh, a modeling uh, platform uh, where you can basically plug in uh, an algorithm and do in 30 minutes what would normally take you a week to do, to do. so that's uh, pretty uh, exciting what he's doing in that space. Uh, he is looking for uh, people to join uh, his company as well. So one of the things that we try and do through our program is, is um, promote a feeder into uh, other organisations. Um, data, which is part of the group, um, AIP Research Centre. So this is the link between ITIC and Macquarie University. Um, Net Strategy and Comstore, Westcon. Um, they're both sort of networking type companies that we work with. Um, Talent Crew gives us opportunities for, um, you know, short-term contracting roles. 
uh, so they're a part of the Paxis group. So we do a lot of work with them uh, where they'll engage us for, you know, say a four week or a six week or an eight week period um, to do a specific outcome based project. Um, CSD and ITI, that's the cybersecurity and software development arms. So what do we do with work integrated learning? What's it, how is it different to a normal internship or, or standard uh, university uh, teaching? So one of the things that we do is soft skills. Um, so part of the work integrated learning program is actually to um, start to get you engaged in normal business operations and you know get you used to attending meetings and uh, you know what happens in a team meeting what, what's the expectations around you um, you know working on things like presentation skills how do you present uh, in a business environment um, what do you do after a meeting how do you make sure that you follow up the tasks that are assigned or, um, just working in an office environment and getting used to that uh, and then the technical readiness, so we address that through training. So uh, as part of, as I mentioned, the first part of the, the, um, uh, the engagement is around, you know, training you up in certain uh, core skills. Um, now, up until last year, everything that we did was just 100% on site uh, in our offices here in Pitt Street, Sydney. Uh, but since COVID, we've moved to an online uh, LMS and we run all of our uh, training and um, projects and everything that we do now, uh, pretty much either out of Zoom or Microsoft Teams. Uh, so as I mentioned, we've, um, since COVID, we've set up our learning management system. So you can see this one's looking at the cyber program, but uh, you'll have the curriculum uh, course notes and learning materials for data science also on the learning management platform. Uh, so if you're enrolled, uh, you, you get given a login and that gives you access to all of the materials that we have uh, that we use for both uh, the learning and the project work. Uh, we do look for targeted candidates, uh, targeted candidates versus open candidates. Someone who's targeted would be someone who already has some industry experience. Uh, we are looking through Gavin White to uh, engage and find some people who can do um, consulting role or data analyst type roles. Um, so if you've already had a reasonable amount of experience and can work uh, in a commercial sense with, with customers where you can actually go and consult into organisations and develop a scope and build out a project plan and uh, you know do requirements gathering and all those sort of things, if you've got experience with that. Uh, then you would receive the training, but there's no uh, associated uh, enrollment fee for the training, effectively with a scholarship. Uh, and that's how we encourage people uh, who can already operate in a commercial sense on their own merits uh, to come into the program. Uh, but the key there is relevant work experience and technical know-how. Uh, but the program's open to everyone. The only difference, as I said, is uh, the scholarships are only available for the targeted program. Um, for the targeted program, the mapping of how the course runs is a little bit different. So uh, we have an interview and selection period. Um, you do the same uh, training, but we also would have a specific component which relates to the company that you're going to work for. Uh, and from there, uh, obviously during the internship period it's unpaid but they're um, taking people through that method uh, with intention to hire them either as a, a contractor or as a full-time resource uh, at the end. For the open program, so open being open to everyone, uh, as I said the only requirement is that you actually uh, enrol uh, with a course fee for the training component of it. Um, and what you get out of that at the end uh, is a reference. So you could put ITIC on your LinkedIn or data on your LinkedIn profile. Um, you get the pre-placement training. So for data science, we actually get a UTS um, certificate. So the course that we have developed for data science is now actually a short course at UTS called uh, Data Analyst Toolkit. So last semester is the first semester where they're actually 
uh, are awarded a digital certificate and a physical certificate uh, for data science from UTS. So um, that's quite valuable uh, to have that as part of your CV. And then if you do well in the programs, and we're always looking for people to add to our resource pool for contracting jobs. And as I mentioned through Paxis, we quite often get uh, roles that are coming up where we can do, um, you know, you, you can do consulting work for us in different organisations. Um, for the, basically for the program itself, the way that it works uh, for the work experience is usually we'll have a stand up meeting on Monday where we do task allocation. Now this is after the four to five week um, data science fundamentals course. And as we said here, upon completion, you'll get the UTS Open Data Analyst Toolkit Certificate. Um, once we get to the work experience, Monday stand up and task allocation. Wednesday, we try and have guest speakers or do Q&A. And then Friday is where you present back to the team. So that's your, your team meeting uh, throughout the the period of the work experience component. Uh, we have Schwang, as we uh, saw in the presentation, is AI enabled exam marketing uh, that we're working on. And, and Navi's program is around using deep learning to detect uh, cyberbullying uh, on uh, social media. Now with the UTS open course, uh, the commercial rate for that on the UTS website is $1,950. That's included uh, in the enrollment fee for the uh, data science course. Um, and because obviously you guys are uni students, it's heavily discounted uh, for the enrollment to include uh, everything at a lower rate uh, for you guys. But prerequisite training uh, includes Python, SQL, um, Tableau and Power, Power BI. And then we also do uh, machine learning and deep learning uh, with the certificate at the end of it. Now this diagram here is basically a high level conceptual for uh, the AI enabled exam marking. Um, this API gateway is what our software guys are building at the moment. And um, you'll be working with Python and AI machine learning uh, to build the EC2 service. So this is all hosted in the AWS cloud. Um, so you get some experience with that. Hamza's, uh, who's on the software side, uh, he's AWS certified, so he's running that component. Uh, and then as far as the actual uh, machine learning algorithms go, uh, that's being developed um, and the process for uh, the analysis of the marking um, Flow is being done by uh, Shwang. Now, Shwang's a, uh, a postdoc researcher. Um, she's engaged with ITIC through a research agreement that we have. Uh, we have two commercial agreements with Macquarie University for research. Uh, both of them are around uh, working, uh, both of them are around uh, AI enabled education. Um, so we have Shwang as a postdoc in our research team, and then Nabi. Uh, he's a PhD candidate. And at the moment, we've applied for ARC linkage, which is um, the Australian Research Council. Uh, they provide funding where they match dollar for dollar based on company contribution. Uh, so ideally, we'll be able to double the size of the team uh, if that gets approved, which is expected uh, in July. Uh, on that one, we're, we're partnering with the Australian Federal Police. Uh, Macquarie University and UNSW uh, in that application. Uh, so with Nabi's um, with Nabi's project, uh, deep learning based cyberbullying detection uh, by combining textual and visual uh, features. One of one of the things that he's doing uh, is around actually building the data sets. So uh, that's one of the big things that will come out of it. So that we have something to use uh, in, in uh, predicting or analyzing, uh, detecting cyberbullying. And then you can see we have our three um, instructors and, and mentors. So Ava uh, is, is just about finished. I think she's just submitted, uh, she's not finished a PhD. Uh, she's been, she developed and has been running the course, uh, which has been, now uh, adopted by UTS 
as I said, and hence why I get a certificate as part of the course uh, completion. Nabi works at um, Domain. Uh, he's a senior software engineer, but he's, he's more a, a data engineer now. So he started as a software guy and moved into uh, you know, data science, data engineering. And then Shuang uh, is, is postdoc. And Shuang, that's a very good photo of you. I don't think I've seen you with your hair out like that that long before. Uh, so thank you. I have to check that that's actually you. You look very different. So <laughs> that's you. a nice photo. Yeah, very nice photo. Uh, so we've got Shuang, who's our, our PhD or postdoc uh, researcher and leading the AI enabled uh, project and has uh, significantly contributed uh, to the development of our uh, process that we patented as part of that uh, research. Okay, so the roles that are available, uh, both around data analyst uh, for the targeted one, they're all also, if you have the right level of experience, there are some consulting roles where you would be dealing with real customers and working on real projects, uh, but they're very specific uh, in the requirements and you would have to pass a series of interviews. So. Uh, you know, if you have done your five years working in that particular field in between your undergrad uh, and your masters, uh, then I'd, I'd highly encourage you to apply for those little roles. Um, so the plan is that we submit our application. Uh, so that will be your transcript and your CV, if you haven't already done that, to jobs at itrc.com.au and select either targeted or open data science in the subject line so it's easy for us to uh, to sort them if that's possible and we're hoping that applications will be in well before but uh, we close on the 9th of july and the semester starts i think in the last week of july so that's when we'll kick off the, the next program now we do expect that we've had one enrollment from uh, ACT Health. So we're actually uh, running the program for people who are going to join from uh, outside of university now. So this is the first semester where we've had, um, it's a government agency where they're actually uh, enrolling their, uh, so they've got a graduate program and they're actually enrolling the graduates that they've hired into our uh, work in the graduate learning program. So as we go along, you're going to find that there's a, you know, we, we, we'll build a network of, it's not just going to be all um, Macquarie University, there'll be people from other universities and there might even be people coming in from uh, outside and in industry as well. Okay, so there's our socials if you'd like to connect. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, um, Stephen with a PH. S-T-E-P-H-E-N, Oborn. Uh, so feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, and we do all the updates on the ITRC uh, LinkedIn page as well to keep you across uh, everything. Uh, we've got Jennifer, uh, who's sort of coordinating the program and Samuel, uh, who's doing the enrollments and talking to all of the students. Um, so you will get the opportunity uh, to talk to all of us and, and hopefully you know, come in and enroll and uh, we'll run through the program with you and, and look forward to, uh, um, you know, work together with you. Okay, so at this point, uh, I'll just open it up for questions. Uh, we have gone close to the, the 30 minutes, but I'm uh, happy to stay on uh, if to answer any questions. Otherwise, uh, if you've got all the information that you need, uh, please, send through your CVs and your transcripts. Um, and this has also been recorded, so Jennifer will publish that uh, and send it out for anyone who registered who uh, missed the uh, presentation. So just opening it up, is there any questions for Shuang or Jennifer or myself? Um, can I ask a question, please? Can I ask a question, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so my question is basically after we submit the uh, CV and our transcripts uh, to that particular mail ID, 
um, after that, if you're shortlisted, uh, what will be the process? Like, will there be further interviews or will it only be uh, based on uh, the selection will only be based on our CVs and transcripts or will there be like further interviews? And um, So what we normally do is an analysis of the CV and transcript. And if you're applying for the targeted program uh, and you have relevant uh, work experience, then we will pass your CV to uh, our external company uh, who are looking for the consulting roles um, and then if they um, agree that you're suitably qualified then they will call you for, a, for an interview uh, for that particular position. Um, if you're enrolling in the open program uh, it's more about you deciding uh, to enroll. Uh, there's not as long as you're even if you're wanting to do data science but you're doing a master's of you know IT networking and cybersecurity. Um, as long as your GPA is uh, over seven, uh, or you, sorry, your WAP is over seven, uh, then we're, we're okay with that. Or seven I wanted to know what is the difference between open and the other category that you uh, told us? Yeah, so the difference between open and, and targeted. Targeted is where you will be targeted for a, uh, a role within a, the external company and what that means is that there is a, a course fee associated to the UTS open uh, data analyst uh, certification um, which is uh, $1,500 which is basically your enrollment fee so if you're doing the open one it's open to everyone but you pay for the uh, the training component the enrollment into the training component if you're in the targeted one, then you get a scholarship for that. You still do the course, uh, but because you're moving on to an external company and not just running through the work integrated learning program here at ITIC, uh, then, then the company basically pays uh, for that training for you, so you don't have to pay. All right. And uh, if we go are able to get that internship position or that role, or will it be a paid job or is it an unpaid one? Uh, it's an unpaid internship, but if you go through the selection process and um, get to work with the company, then they're looking to, uh, assuming that you perform in a satisfactory level and, and connect with the team and, and do a good job during your uh, semester, then at the end of the work integrated learning program, uh, then they're looking to hire those people that come through that process. Now that hiring might be either them hiring you directly or them providing ITIC a contracted role and ITIC hiring you to work in that company. But at that point, once the program's finished, then if you continue to work, then it will be well. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, no problem. Uh, hi, hi Steven, this is Samida. I actually had a question. Um, I've submitted my application, but I have not mentioned it to be will targeted or will open. So should I resubmit my uh, application? Um, if you haven't, if you haven't nominated, um, if it's if you just want to go into the open program, then if you haven't said anything, we'll assume it's open. Um, if you want to go into the targeted uh, shortlist or, or, or sort of you know go into the list for people we're looking at targeted, then please uh, email back and say that you'd like to join uh, the targeted. So what will happen is if you select targeted, once we've done the assessment, um, if it's not successful, then transfer back to the open program uh, if you'd like to continue. Okay, so anyone who's having a GPA above seven is fine, right? Because I'm actually currently studying at Macquarie and I have a uh, work experience, but it's not like a full time work. I have a part time winter internship as a research analyst. So will that okay. be counted or that might not be counted? As a re so, what sort of um, what sort of things did you do as a re was it working on a what sort of project was it that you were working on as a research analyst? It was a sales and marketing research. 
Okay. Um, so what they're looking for is people who have um, sort of business analyst or data analyst skills, but who can actually, okay. you know, present and, and talk to the customers and work independently. So it's sort of, um, it, it's a role that if you haven't actually done that specific role before, like if you, mm -hmm. um, you know, you can either work in the background as a business analyst or a data analyst okay. and work alongside someone. Um, but okay. ideally you would be able to, you know, talk to customers, gather requirements, um, you know, attend meetings and, and represent uh, the company, uh, in which case, okay. um, if you can do that, well, I then, think, uh, then that would be. Okay, so I think then my application automatically will become or will open rather than the targeted one, right? Yeah, so depending, once we have a look at your CV, if we see relevant experience, then we'll put you up for um, assessment okay. by the company. Um, if there isn't any okay. relevant experience, then we'll, you know, and we'll move you into open and then it's up to you to choose uh, if you'd still like to enroll. Uh, but hopefully you will, uh, okay. because it's, 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 it's very worthwhile. We've been running it for, uh, this is the fourth, so it's, yeah, two years now. Um, mm -hmm. The content's quite developed, the project's very advanced, you know, we've come a long way in our research and we're ready to build our prototype. So it'd, it'd be quite interesting for everyone, uh, I think, if, if okay. you're doing irrespective of whether you're targeted or, or, or open. No worries. Thank you so much, Stephen. Have a nice day. No problem. Stephen, uh I'd like to say that uh, I have been doing a research internship with the University of Sydney for the uh, last, uh, for the last uh, almost 1.5 years, which is related to deep learning. And I've also okay. done live projects on CNN, convolution neural network. And uh, so uh, I have almost like 1.5 years of experience in research related to deep learning and uh, image classification using convolution neural network. So will that be like an okay. additional plus point if I could mention that in my uh, job application? Yes. Like how yes, should I convey that? Okay. Yeah, so just um, ideally talk about what you've worked on, deep learning, um, you know, neural networks, um, image recognition, and, and particularly around the, the projects or a description of the project, what you did, what your role was, um, and, and the technologies that you've worked with. Um, and if you've done anything in Python or SQL or, uh, you know, Power BI or, or any, any sort of, you know, anything that could be um, more sort of data visualization as well, that would be uh, highly regarded uh, if you have any of those skills. All right. So I'll mention that via email while sending my application. Yeah, that'd be great. All right. So have you finished at uh, University of Sydney Uni or are you still, um, are you doing masters or are you doing uh, a PhD or what are, what are you, uh, are you doing uh, post -grad currently, or undergrad? Uh, so I'm currently doing a master's in computer engineering and uh, okay. actually master's in software engineering. And uh, I also have uh, a research well, component associated we, with it. Yeah, okay. So we, we, one of the things that we actually do need as well is, uh, so we have a software development team. And probably not, if you, you know, it might not be, um, uh, you know, with, with what you're looking to do, it's obviously not aligned to that. But if anyone uh, who's on the um, presentation today is interested in software and wants to work in a software uh, development role, um, the, the software company that I have, uh, we have a, a Sydney team. We also have a team based in Berlin, um, and and we are looking for um, software developers. Um, so if you do have software skills and you're interested in maybe giving that a go, um, we, we can do an assessment there. And, and we're not running that as a work integrated learning program. So there's no training, so you'd have to know, you know, something like Node.js or React or you know, C sharp dot net, um, SQL, MongoDB, um, React. I think I said that. Um, but if you've got those skills already, 
um, to sort of a mid or, or senior level, uh, we'd definitely be interested in talking to anyone who's on the call who's got software developers. So we do, we are looking to, if we can, bring someone through uh, into the software team. Uh, and, and that would be uh, moving to a, either a contractor role or a full-time role uh, at the end of the, the program as well. So is it like if I uh, go for that software development thing, I'll be given a full-term role at the end of the... Um, is yes, yes. So we're, we're looking to hire someone in the software team if you have uh, good software development skills. Um, and so basically we have two platforms. One, which is the older platform, which was written in C Sharp using .NET, uh, MVC. And then the other platform, which is Node.js. Um, so if you've worked on either of those to a reasonable level, and you know JavaScript, um, and you, you know you can do um, sort of backend database type work, uh, we're looking to hire someone uh, if we can get a good software engineer to come into the team through the through the program. Uh, we are looking to if they're good, we're looking to hire someone at the end. I have almost eight months of experience in software development related to C Sharp, .NET, and uh, even JS. So uh, mm, I'm okay. actually now confused which role I should apply for. <laughs> so I was thinking, well, can I mention apply for apply for both? Apply for both. I've just mentioned that you might be interested in software, and then that goes for anyone else on the on the call. Uh, if you do have those software skills. Um, just expression, expressing interest in the software development, software engineer role, uh, because we are looking for someone. So we'll we'll get our software devs to, uh, you know, ask you a few questions, give you a bit of a quiz, and and if you're suitable, we'll definitely bring you in for the uh, for the for the period of the internship. Um, and then if you, you know, obviously, there's two things. One is existing skills, and the other is that we look at that we assess is how quickly you learn. Um, if you can learn quickly, then um, that's that's the key part to sort of being successful. Once we see that you, um, even if you're not at a you know senior level when you arrive, if in that twelve week period you can you know uh, be successful as far as being able to research, investigate, work, just work things out. And then we want people who can work things out for themselves. And that's the main thing that software development is about. Uh, researching, working it out, testing it, um, you know, writing your code in a way that's um, easy for other software developers to read. That's all the sort of things that they look, like, look for. So if I apply for the software development role, uh, should I also mention targeted over there, targeted or open? And will that also- uh, it's, only, it's, only, it's only targeted. So the software development role, we're not doing any training component for. So the software development role, if you're successful, you would come and work in the software team. And, uh, okay, all right, that sounds good. Thank you so much. Yeah. But yeah, by all means, apply for both. And so goes to, to anyone else who's got some good software skills in the call. Please feel free to apply for that as well. Hi, Stephen. I have one question. I applied, uh, uh, apply, I uh, submit my application, but the thing is uh, I haven't written that it is data analyst for the target or for the open. Uh, I have pre experience in SQL p sequels and the sql server integration services in data analysis and i'm also experienced in visualizations so should i resubmit my profile because the deadline is already exceeds so would you be considering it if i resubmit it uh yeah so i mean given that we've just run the information session now please uh just let us know point out that you've you know you've done things within um so with data visualization what have you worked on uh, I have worked on in SQL Server reporting services and uh, Power BI, and uh, in okay. in transformations. Uh, I worked on in SQL Server integration services. So, yes. 
Okay, so you can do both. Three games you can work on. You can do queries both on the SQL side and then do yes. data manipulation in yes. in uh, in BI. Okay. Yes. Yeah, just just note that down because you might be looking for. I mean, predominantly he's looking for people who can move into consulting roles fairly quickly, um, but also, um, you know, you might be able to, if there is a strong, particularly Power BI or, um, you know, on the SQL, on the server side as well, um, yeah, it might be useful. So it's worth, definitely worthwhile to, to, uh, to let, let us know. Um, okay. We can put that on the list of, of what we send through. Okay. Um, because I have three years of experience in the in this profile. Uh, oh, so, okay. All right. Yes. And, uh, I think you were mentioning about you... the and ben Python, so I have both experiences. Yeah. Okay. So the training does cover SQL and Python uh, and Power BI, and it also covers. Um, uh, Deep learning and, and machine learning algorithms. Okay. All right. So yeah, definitely note that down. That would be good. And what we're going to do from here is um, I've got a lot of emails in my inbox from Macquarie students because we have my email as the uh, contact address, but also um, in the jobs email address. I know Jennifer's got those. So I'll make sure if I've if there's anyone on the call who has sent a email directly to me um i will make sure that uh, those are all across to jennifer ready for next week um if you haven't received a response i apologize for that uh, but this week's been super busy uh, and we're, we're getting ready to sort of coordinate everything from next week okay so uh, the cv that where i sent was jobs at the rate itic.com yeah that's yeah that's the one yeah if you send it to jobs then everyone gets it if you send it directly to me um i've got a thousand emails in my inbox that i have to go through uh, so uh, i can send it to over. you by, if you can get yeah, no, if you send it to jobs that's good it's it's where it needs to be. Stephen, i had a quick question so um I wanted to know that if uh, we get the software developer role, when will it start and till what time will it go on? As in like, when it. Um, yeah, so if you're doing it as part of the university semester, it would start, I think on the 29th of July is the plan and that would go for 13 weeks. Um, and then at the end of that period, um, and we've done it a couple of times before, we brought people in, because uh, we pr predominantly run the, the uh, work integrated learning or, or internship program for Macquarie University students, uh, but it is open to everyone. Uh, so it runs aligned to their semester, um, which would mean that at the end of the 13 weeks, um, if um, your skill set is at the level uh, that we need it to be, then then we definitely would, would offer you a job uh, as, a, as a junior developer, as a starting point. Um, it's like 38 weeks from, um, and it's starting from uh, end of July, right? Did I get that correct? Yeah, correct. So it's aligned. July. Yeah, so we run we run those aligned to the to the Macquarie University semester. So I think it's the 29th or 30th of July or something, and it goes for 13 weeks. Um, also, if someone garners the software developer role, will it be a paid role or an unpaid one? Uh, well, for the internship, it's unpaid, and then at the end of it, if we, you know, it's basically like a 13 week job interview uh, that we run as an intern uh, program. So you won't be working, uh, you'll be working with the team, but what they'll be getting you to do is, is work that's, um, you know, part of components of what we do. Uh, you won't be obviously delivering on any customer projects, uh, hence it's unpaid. Um, but you will get a taste of what the environment is and some of the components or functions within the program uh, that we need to uh, get some, um, you know, that you can work on, that can, you can contribute to and you can commit, uh, you know, in, in GitHub and, and those sort of things. Um, but from there, once we get past that, 
um, then you'll work on the actual software uh, when we to a sort of paid role at the end. So Stephen, if someone has university when this program or this internship starts, does that mean that that person has to continue studying at the same time, continue doing this internship? Or does this mean that we will be allowed to take uh, six months of uh, I mean, what I'm trying to um, say. So, yeah. so for Macquarie, if obviously you're not from Macquarie, but for Macquarie students, it's a subject that they enrol in for their last semester of their masters. So they do that instead of going to uni, they come here. Um, if you're enrolled at another university, um, if you can get credit for doing an industry-based internship, um, then you may be able to get course credit for that, and we can provide the information uh, to your course coordinator on. You know the role and what you've been doing and all of those sort of things um, but if it's not accepted by the uni then it would just be a case of you know doing maybe a couple of days a week um, at the times when you're at uni you might just come into the office once a week or something when the, the team comes in on a tuesday and a thursday so um, you can sort of just come in on one you know, one or, or both of those days if you're available, uh, and then uh, do the rest of your work remotely. Uh, just work together with the guys on on Microsoft Teams. Okay, I think my university does have an allowance for the industry program, so I think it should be good. Uh, lastly, mm -hmm. I'd just like to know, Stephen, uh, what exactly is your email ID in case we wish to send the job application to you as well? Yeah, so let me, I'll put that in chat now. So obviously the one you've got is jobs at itrc.com.au and then my email is stephen. Um, so just put mine and the, uh, the main one in the chat. So feel free to copy me in. Um, on your application as well. Thanks a lot, Stephen. Yeah, no problem. We've still got a couple of a couple of other people on the on the call. Is there any more questions? Okay, well, if there's no more questions, um, thank you everyone for attending. I really appreciate everyone taking the time to, to join. And as I mentioned, Jennifer has recorded this session. So anyone who missed out will get a copy of it. Uh, and feel free to forward to every of your uh, fellow students if they're, if they're interested in data science as well. Uh, so thanks once again, have a great afternoon. Enjoy the long weekend and uh, hope we will talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Frank.